I'm 68. So you started writing when you were 10 years old? Yes. 58 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, you know. It's, it's a record. And throughout Malaysia, those who are involved in biking for, or bike dealership, everybody knows me. As far as Johor, Singapore, Thailand, north of Thailand, Chiang Mai. So I always tell myself, I'm going to do a trip which nobody can do it and taking the most difficult terrain meaning I have to go through China, Pakistan, China and true enough the China border was the most difficult border to cross Xinjiang it's the worst country and worst border town entering from where? from Pakistan oh on your way back is it? not on the way down so you went into China from Pakistan? From Pakistan. From Afghanistan, I went to Pakistan. And from Pakistan, I took the highest border post in the world. They call it the Kunjara Pass. The highest border post in the world. Okay, so what was your route? Malaysia, Thailand? Malaysia, Thailand, India. Thailand to India via Burma, is it? Yes, yes. India, then... Uh, so Malaysia, Thailand, Burma? India. India? Yeah. And from India, Pakistan? India, Pakistan? Pakistan, then we go to Afghanistan. Then I go through China. And from China, I go to Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. So how many of you started the journey? Nine. Nine. Nine started. How many made it all the way? Three made it. Okay. And we have a fatal accident in India. What happened there? Rider, I think he he dozed off in India City. You know, India City is like Taipusum in Malaysia. Delhi. Yeah. Every day is Taipusum. Yeah. Huge crowd, a lot of traffic. I think he, we were doing about 20, 25 kilometer. And he heads straight for a lorry, parked beside the road, unloading. And he went straight. And he was killed instantly. Wow, how old was he? Was he 55. Just, just fatigue, lah, right? Yeah, fatigue. Wow. Weather was about 48, 49 Celsius. Hot, yeah. India is really hot. Yeah. Full leathers on. No, we don't wear full leather. We have you wear Cordura. I'm on a airbag jacket. The rest all are good quality jacket now. Yeah. But no leather. Yeah. No leather. All on Cordura. So what does it take to do a trip like that? Because presumably you need to be quite fit. You need to be quite of um you know Healthy, Ment mentally, right? Mentally, you must be strong. You've got to be resilient, right? Yeah. So, so what does it take to do a trip like that? Well, you must have your exposure. Like, usually I interview guys who wanted to join. I, I don't charge them anything. It's free. Whatever I pay, you pay. Whatever I pay, you pay. I don't charge even five cents. So before the trip, guys who wanted to follow me, not the young guys, you know, all the uncles, I take them to short trip, camping, do a little bit off-road on the hilly stop make a U-turn actually I trained them mm. some fail some qualify and some say no problem I fail today because I'm not fit so end of the day I knew what is going on with the eight of them who is following me I know who are fit and who is not fit and I anticipate the situation in India half will go back and they did go. True enough. After the crash, after the fatal accident, they got scared. Everybody left. Only four of us stayed back. So we carry on our journey. Until China. One of the riders, the oldest, 69 years old, he was too exhausted. I see. You have to leave your bike here. Take a flight back to Penang. Get yourself cleared, I'll wait for you in China, in Xinjiang. But accommodation you pay, I'll wait for you. Fair enough. This was the earlier meeting every, everybody mentioned about it. He said, no, I still want to carry on. So we went through. So until Iran, we couldn't make it anymore. Still tired. Still tired. Still, he said he wanted to carry on. Then we reached Turkey. No way. 
it was totally drained. It's about, he started at 45 kg. When I carry him on my arm, he was only 35 kg. Whoa. So in Istanbul, I carry him to the hospital. And that's it. Lah. He passed it? No, he didn't. Hmm. The doctor said, you are not going and you are totally drained. So you are not allowed to move anymore. And he starts. The journey ended. there. Everybody else on the cup chai? Yeah, everybody on the cup chai. So the exhaustion comes from what? From the heat. He's a smoker. He take three in one Nescafe like drinking water. We are always on clear water and he only drink three in one in Nescafe. The Shashi type. But if his name is Frankie, I say Frankie, stop. Too much coffee and <laughs> too much cigarette. So actually, conclusion is you must be mentally strong. How how many the what was your distances on a daily basis? Every day, uh, 300, 400. Wow, that is huge. Desert in Turkmenistan. There was one incident. Four of us. <laughs> so from Europe, from before Iran, the last Central Asia was Turkmenistan. We have Petronas and got an oil field there, you know, our Petronas. We enter. And no visa for us, you know. I only have the carne. We travel on zero visa. How to apply visa when you travel on a bike? The embassy here will ask you for where's your return ticket. So you only bought a carne and that's it. You didn't carne. apply any visas. I have the India visa and the China visa. That's it. Wow. The rest is all cowboy border posts. There's no proper building, it's all cowboy. Bob wire, 44 gallon tank, machine gun. <laughs> so, took me this time was the most interesting. I enter, there's a hill, so I went down. I say, You guys stay here. Don't move until I go down. If I can make the clearance, then you'll come down. So I went down to took me son and one of the officers who can speak English. Hey, you came from Malaysia on a bike? Yes. Do you have a visa? I said no visa. Then you have to pay US 20. So I paid him 20. I got four passports here. So I paid him 80 US. He said, where are the three? I said, on top of the hill. Then he went in and processed. He speak good English. After that, he passed it to me. Wow, I'm so happy. Another two weeks. You see? So, uh, the other three guys, I call them now. So I return all the passport to them. And the late Mr. Eric Lim, he went through the pages. Hey, why four days only? Or five days only? I said, cannot be five days. It's 15 days. Or 14 days. Why five? Maybe he made a mistake. Because all written in the language. Huh? So I went back to the officer. Huh? I said, you made a mistake, sir. It's supposed to be 14 days. Why you write? Five only. Yes, I only give you five days. I said, you must be joking, man. From here to the next border, Iran, it's about 2,008 kilometers in the desert. How for me to meet it? If my bike breaks down, or if anybody gets sick, then you'll be arrested. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be arrested. 5 p.m. is a curfew there. Shit. And 4 p.m. is there. Dark. The sunset is there. So within the five days, we rode all the way non stop just to finish the 2008 kilometer. We made it in time. We made it in time. The hell, man. And the last place was on the fire well in Turkmenistan where it burns throughout the year. We came there, the fire well, and after that, we left for Iran. We see nothing, uh, we see horses. Uh, that place is a lot of horses in uh, Turkmenistan. Wild horses. Yeah, wild horses. Uzbekistan, wild horses, Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan is a modern town, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, 
what what is the um, obstacle for old guys to be riding? I mean, you, you would think that you have, it's a young man's game. You got to be strong. You know everything. Um, but your your trip to Downing Street, all old guys. All old guys. The youngest is fifty five. Incredible. What was the biggest obstacles on the trip? The biggest obstacle was the Karakorum Highway, the world most dangerous road in so steep hill. Yeah, and then you got sheer drops on either side. Yes, right? yes, yeah. yes. And then cars passing, lock, yeah, trucks yeah. passing yes, both sides. Yes, yes, lorry coming down. They won't stop for you. They won't give way to you. Whenever you see a lorry coming, big truck carrying ration food for them, you go as near as possible to the cliff. <laughs> Light a bike on the cliff and let him pass through. Whoa. Which is dangerous. So there was many, many fall. Actually, the four of us keep on falling. And only two guys can help the other two. Me and Timothy. The guy who stayed in Jitra and stuff. Because too heavy. Too heavy. Even you drop your EX5. No, no joke. Yeah. Three times. Yeah. You are dead. Continuous, you drop three times. And how many times can you pick up the bike and with the load? You're loaded, right? Yeah. EX5 <laughs> is about 95 kg. Yes. Our but load is about 40 kg. So 135. Yeah, 135. On an uneven terrain, usually when you fall, it's on the slope or up the slope. Yeah. yeah. That is the most difficult terrain. Up the slope, you fall. Down the slope, you fall. You just lose your balance. And beautiful thing about a Honda Cup, it takes in all kind of fuel. In the lowest street, huh? Lower street is only 80 of 10. The when? When I started motorcycle, Malaysia was 85. <laughs> and the Honda just keep on swallowing the fuel. It goes. Why the Honda Cup made it? Because I call it a four-wheel drive. A lot of people say, what do you mean Honda car bag or four-wheel drive? When the going get back, you put down your two legs, you just pedal, keep on balancing and go through. Yeah. Even the desert, yeah. even the high terrain or down terrain, use your leg to balance it. Lah. So it's almost a four, like a four-wheel. So this kind of journey, Better with the Honda Cup than a, say a BMW GS? No, no, it must be. If I were to do it, I'm going to do it on a Honda Cup again. Yeah, why? No, it's too unforgiving. Yeah. No way you can go through a BMW. Number one is the fuel quality. 80. 80 octane in Iran, in Pakistan. No petrol station, it's all from the drum. Only a service Honda Cup. And the Honda Cup survive on vegetable oil. <laughs> Amazing. They don't have shop like Samsung. You want Castro, you want this, you want that, you know. All are, we use engine oil from truck. And no motorcycle. You don't see motorcycle there. So we buy a five pack, uh, five liter pack of vegetable oil. Then we use it. Uh. And keep on going. The bike kept on going. This is the Honda Wave 125, right? Yeah. So when I went, before we depart from Penang, there are journalists, uh, you know, ask me what kind of bike is this? So would you not interested in us? Whatever I see a Honda on the bike, I just put a sticker to cover it. Uh. So all these guys, what bike is this? I say this guy is a mix of everything. I don't want to advertise for them. I have Kawasaki part, I have got Honda part, Suzuki part. No wonder we don't see any Honda on the parts. You see the engine, there's an emblem there. Man. Yeah. A red light or what. So I covered everything. It's an amazing advertisement for them though. Why didn't they want to... Bunshu should have easily taken me in. I yeah. don't know why. So when we reached Bangkok, this marketing man called me up. Mr. Lim, I want you for interview. Can you come back? I said, sorry, you are, you are late Zahari. I'm now in Bangkok. Outside Bangkok, the best part when Honda refused to take me in. Outside Bangkok, there's a bike shop, a Honda dealer, a small, like Samsung. We check into a homestay opposite the shop. And he saw nine bikes, all Honda, and one of the ladies came out. 
can speak in English. Hey, where are you guys going? I said, we are going to London. You going to London on this one? We should, I told them. No. She ran back to her shop, brought her husband. Take us for dinner. We stayed there for five days to prepare our bike dish and the church. That shop paid everything for our accommodation, including our dinner. Wow. And he gave us 20 pieces of Mark Marquez World Champion wow. t-shirt. Not Bunsi, you know. It's the shop itself. Wow. And he brought six carton of engine oil. I said, no, 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 wow. we cannot carry engine oil in one liter pack. We only pick two liters and put on our basket. The rest we take it back. We cannot load too much on our bike. Yeah. That generous. Did you, did you did you did you did you modify the suspension or not? No, everything is standard. standard. The rear suspension I modify it yeah. to a stiffer suspension, yeah. heavy duty. Yeah. The front I add in some extra fork oil. 10 cc of extra oil. And the rest is stock standard. No modification. What was the best thing about the trip? The best thing about the trip was the people you meet on the road. They are so friendly. So friendly. Nobody threatens us. Except in Pakistan. We came in a hilly area. And Pakistan is a hostile country. They saw the campfire. Middle of the night, they ambushed us. Middle of the night, it was 2 a.m. I think, 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. What happened? Huh? What happened? They thought it's an Indian army. Came in with machine gun. Don't move. Big officer can speak English. Pakistan most of the time can speak English in Pakistan. Get out, stand up. Put your hand behind your back. Check my passport. It's not four of you. Eventually, I end up in a garrison. We stayed four days there with free food and free accommodation. <laughs> it's too dangerous to come out here. You'll be killed. Wow. The big officer came down. He speak good English. Okay, now, put down your tent. Everything you throw in our truck, you follow me. So we followed him up all the way to the, you know, the desert garrison. It's about half an hour. Uh, this is the place you stay. Free food. Free liquor. <laughs> Instead of staying one day, we stayed four days there. And the best was, our bike was so dirty, we got the soldier boys to clean up the bike. Oh. <laughs> Silver lining. Now I used to email him, the officer. He's a Singh. Oh. Harit Singh. Harit H-A-R-I-T. What does it feel for an elder guy to be doing these trips? Uh? I mean, what's the what's the thinking? Uh? What's the message to other people? Uh? Message to when I came back, uh, I received a lot of call and interview, especially the young college boy, young college boy, all Malay, not the Chinese, the Usad, Usad. Get Mara, you know, yeah. the Get Mara boys, the Sami Velu University in Sermiling boys. The whole group review came in to me and asked for my permission. They are inspired by me. So I gave talk to them in their school. What did you tell them? Huh? What did you tell them? I don't know what you need for, for kind of traveling. Almost the same question you asked me. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of guys your age are. Playing golf, <laughs> staying at home watching TV. And the best part, I four guys from Bukit Matajam who are my customer. Big guy, strong, tattoo. You see, Mr. Lim, I want to make a trip like your trip. How much you want to charge us? I said 100,000. On what motorcycle? I told them Honda Cup. They give up. Because they own BMW, GSA, GS, you know. I say that bike won't take the journey. No way he can meet it through. Okay, then Honda Cup. What about the accommodation? We make the arrangement to book out the hotel. I say no, mine is a many-star hotel. 
He said, what do you mean many star? I can afford to pay you what? five star, four star. I said, no, my hotel is a many star hotel. He said, look how many go on. Five star to get along there. Well, it comes all the way over which guy. So eventually, they understand what is many star. The no moment you lie down, you see all the star there. Oh, one and one. Okay, never mind. <laughs> what about toilet? Outside. Outside. You did, then you bury. Yeah. Yeah, Four of them gave up. They drive big four wheel drive, you know, Hammer, FJ Cruiser, Quadio, you know, like Red Bull, you know. But, man, worse than cool. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I call them the ur- urban guy. Uh. Urban guy. Uh, right. Urban guy, uh, the urban gorilla. They look very serious. Big muscle, you know, sleeveless t shirt every day, you know. <laughs> but I cannot take it. Mentally, you must be strong. You must be an outdoor guy to make it to that trip. Actually, you have to test your own metal. Uh. Try to stay in the jungle for one week. Today, I take trips on Honda Cup into the jungle. Like the MCU, I used to go into the jungle four days, five days. We came out. We don't bring food, you know. Oh, yeah, there was We fish from the stream, river. That's it. Uh. And I got one guy who is a hunter, wall ball. It's all free. Yeah. We bring extra fuel, that's it. <laughs> Three in one coffee. You know, that's it. Lah. Excellent. You're welcome to join me lah, if I have a trip. When are you going to go again? I'll let you know. Yeah. Well, at the MCO for the last three months, I went in three times. Which national Greek. park? National park. A oh, national park. Yeah. Greek in Banding. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's undercover girl lah. Is it? Yeah. There's no road, you know. Yeah. So you go in by Kapchai lah. Kapchai. On the same bike, the Honda. <laughs> My Honda is doing hundred and sixty thousand kilometer. Wow. That's still that running today. That I wanted trip. to ride in today, but my wife brought me this morning. You came in a truck instead, actually. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, BK, what's your, what's your next trip? My next trip, hopefully I can meet it through. Alaska, all the way down to South America, Argentina, Chile. To a place where it's uh, one of the wonders in the world. Uh, Del Fago, Fury Del Fago. Yeah, Terra Del Fuego, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know how to call it. It's a beautiful place. All the way to the tip of South America. Yeah, South America, all the way down. It's uh, really, it's it's wild country there. Yeah, it's a wild country. After Mexico, it's all wild country. How many countries and how how, how far is it? It's about 55,000 kilo. Or 25 countries. Um, You're just going to go on the west coast? Yeah, on the west coast. So no Brazil? Yeah, no Brazil. If I have that, I will visit Brazil. So this not is not very uh, far actually from the west coast to Brazil is not that far. Yeah. To Venezuela is Andy, the country is on bankruptcy. Yeah. So the most feared is Honduras. Yeah. And Panama Canal. Yeah. 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 Oh, shit. Ecuador and Peru is beautiful. So you start Alaska, then Canada, Canada. then of course West Coast, huh? Uh, West Coast, California Canada. all the way down. Uh, the way down. Huh? Then Mexico. Mexico. Then after that? After Mexico, I will go to Honduras. Then there is a place called La Bamba. Then down a few small towns, huh? uh, small cities. Huh? Yeah. Uh, on the way, all the way down. Huh? So I might go into Venezuela, Colombia. So a lot of people, my brother-in-law say, Please do not go to Honduras or Colombia. They won't kill you, they want your bike. Oh shit. <laughs> they want your motorcycle. I had a friend who visited me while I was with BMW, Auto Bavaria Penang. A German guy who rode all the way from, from India, he shipped his bike to Bangkok. And he came down, a young German guy on a Yamaha 660. He was here for one and a half month because his bike broke down. So I said, when are you going? He said, I'm shipping my bike to Mexico. And from Mexico, he rode down. And that was it. Halfway through the jungle. It's a jungle route, but with good paved road. 
Six of them waited for him on the roadside, stripped him naked, and six of them sat on the bike. Oh shit! Left him standing on the side of the road. Naked. Naked. <laughs> Only the underwear. Oh they took god. everything from him. Oh my god! So he got no money, he got nothing. Eventually, an army truck stopped to pick him up. And from there, he called his parents in Germany. They flew in with the money and took him back. Oh my god. Passport all gone also? All gone. <laughs> so, that is the most dangerous area. But I got a brother who, in law who is working in Mexico. He said it's quite safe today. Yeah. It was many years ago, but it's quite safe today. So, how many of you doing this trip? Well, it's me alone and one potential guy, a Malay boy. A Malay oh, man. Potential. So yeah. he may or may not come. Yeah. So you're going to do this solo, potentially? Actually, it's solo. Actually, it's solo. Solo, actually, is more safer. Yeah. Yeah? Really? Less problem. Because I know what to do with my own bike. My 650 Kawasaki is carbureted. So it's tubeless. It's from tube type to tubeless. I modified my tubeless. So it's very easy. No and, flats. Yeah. And in the uh, US, there is a lot of KLR. It's one of the world adventure bikes. The Kawasaki KLR is one of the best bikes in the US. So, spare parts, plenty. So I don't have to worry. Fuel is there. So, 55,000 kilometers, 25 countries. How long are you budgeting? Five and a half months. Wow. Maybe five months. If I'm, if I'm alone, I can make it within five months. But why are you rushing through? Why don't you just take a year and then you just. Well, you have to spend more if it's a year. Eh? Unless I start working uh, yeah. while riding. I see a shop, maybe I work for you in three days. Like what I did in New Zealand. Uh. What you do in New Zealand? I went there on my Honda 650, year 1999. How old were you then? 1999, I was about 40 plus. I went with my wife. But all the red tape in uh, Auckland, uh, I could disinfect my bike. I got to register under a New Zealand plane. So we take about three days. Uh, I rode from South Island to North, north to South. Amazing trip. Yeah. So in between, I work for them. Uh, farm, driving a tractor. I get some money. Most of them, I spend about, with my wife, I spend about maybe 5,000 again. That's it. No way. <laughs> I went to the zoo to work for them, flower shop, food picking. <laughs> I've done all, I've done all. Oh, God. Um, so how much does it cost to do a trip like that in South America? Maybe 10,000 US. That's very little. How do you get it done to solo? I don't have to pay for accommodation. Just camp? Yeah. And I'm so confident I'll be provided with free accommodation and food, for sure. Yeah. People on the road. And I always travel with a big, big smile. It's very important. You have to travel. Oncoming traffic or whoever on the roadside, just lift your hand and smile to them. Whenever you park your bike, smile to them. Don't think you're the only guy on the road. Yeah. That's where I meet all my friends. You always smile. I get free fuel. I get free vegetable on the roadside. I get free meat on the roadside. So 50% I will anticipate is free. Does it help that you have a, well, on your London trip, does it help that you have a small bike, not a like intimidating bike like a BMW? Yeah. yeah. So when they see an old guy you on see, a small... Yeah, when you go on a, your... Making uh, what you call you making more yourself more vulnerable to this guy to attack you or to steal your things. You see, and I always travel with a dummy wallet. Make sure you want to go overland anywhere in Malaysia. Keep your original wallet somewhere in your bike. To put a dummy wallet for Malaysia, maybe you have twenty dollars, fifteen dollars, twenty five dollars on the dummy wallet. A photo stack IC. So they want you to take the wallet. So it's best to carry a dummy wallet when you travel on a bike. 
So even in Malaysia is quite dangerous to Well there are guys who be drop. Yes, there are cases. Five my rugby comes around you, what are you going to do? We have to give it to them. Yeah. I've never experienced it, I've heard about it that many times. So when are you going to do the Alaska trip? Supposed to be next month. Due to our, you know, COVID-19. So I can't do anything. So don't know when you're going to go, right? Yeah, I don't know when. What you tell your wife when you're going to do the huh? trip? She starts clapping. <laughs> God is great, is it? <laughs> <laughs> She objected actually. He said I'm too old. It's a huge trip. It's probably the most dangerous trip so far. Yes, and he hurt my brother in law in South Mexico. A small town, he's working there. Make sure the BK would come, make sure he's too dangerous. He's an Italian. He lived in Italy, but now for Udini. I told him I'm coming to see to Italy into your house. When I reached his house, uh, he nearly fainted. <laughs> he nearly, the whole family nearly fainted. Oh my god, you really come on a Honda Cup. I thought you came in on, on your BMW. <laughs> you heard about Toro Tech? Toro Tech, no. The hardware for motorcycle BMW in Rangoon Road. No? I had a shop there with my nephew. So the German guy came in. I told him I'm going to visit you in your factory. He said, no way, there's no way. I went to his factory. Nobody believed me, I arrived on the Honda Cup. <laughs> a, German, a German city called Rockville. And Rockville, where the Rockweiler dogs come from there. You know Rockweiler? Yeah, Rockville, yeah. He's from that county, lah, that, that particular town, Rockville. The factory is there, Torotech, where they make hardware. How are you going to get from uh, Malaysia to Alaska? By ship, container ship. I already make all the arrangements actually. Wow. And like those huge Musk container ships you see yes, on the ocean? Yes, yes, yes. Formerly it's MISC, I MISC. believe that it's sold to somebody. Yeah. So one of the big captain there, who is also a biker, he said, no problem. I make the decision not for 20 days of the journey. 20 days. From Port Klang to Anchorage. It seems as if it would be longer, but, but three weeks is quite fast. Oh, about 20 days, more than three weeks. So you, you have to work on the ship? La. Yeah, I have to work on the ship. What kind of stuff? I have you to do, do up a contract, maybe to paint the ship, clean up the ship, work in the kitchen. I don't mind. Yeah. Free? Free. Yeah. And you're paying allowance. Oh, they pay you allowance? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wow. It's a contract work for one month. Wow. So you earn, actually, you can yeah, earn money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I make money from there. Oh yeah, MMP is in US dollar, he, don't, he doesn't know how much, but you are paid. Yeah. When okay, I reach anchorage, yes. off you go. So, you give so I save on the creating on the creating. If you want to ship anywhere in the world, you have to create up your bike. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Incredible. It nice, obviously. Man. It's actually just waiting for it to happen. But unfortunately, the COVID mine shut down everything. Incredible. Incredible. Oh. Incredible. What do you think about when you're riding? What is the best thing you feel when you're riding? It's a therapy for me. I can ride non-stop for 10 hours. Wow. Boom, I'm going to. I can start my journey at the border of Danok. I can travel alone all the way to the bridge of the River Kwai. It's 1200 kilo. Wow. I just fill up, take some drink, take drinks and food on the petrol station and I carry I can make it 11 hours doing 120, 130, 140, 120, 130. Wow. And the safety aspect of riding? Mm, I'm not a guy who really trash up the bike. I'm not a boy racer. I always carry my when the time is up, I change my own and you know it. I go to the shop, I buy a bag, I do my own changing. I do my own adjusting on the clutch. And I really take good care of my two pieces of time. Number one, first thing in the morning, check your wheel. Front and back. Make sure there's no pebble, no nail. Oh, when you're on the trip, sir? On the trip. Yeah. yeah. 
If you should chain drive, oil your chain at night, not in the morning. Oil your chain at night. If you oil in the morning, you will splash all over your wheel. Dangerous. On the big capacity bike, on the Honda Cup, as I said to you, you need a cover, your chain cover. Yeah. To protect from the outside element. Yeah. So your chain, your chain and your sprocket will last longer. Incredible. Incredible. Well, it was good talking to you, BK. <laughs> good luck for Alaska. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Is that your last trip already? Uh, then you oh, the next one is Africa. Africa. So what's your Africa trip? Africa is from, uh, what do you call this? Uh, I will ship my bike to Spain. And from Spain, I will ride down. Okay, across okay. the ocean. Uh. Yeah. So you're going to do the commercial line thing or you're going to ship it? Great. I'm going to ship it. Okay, then you fly. Well, my friend, don't, the container ship don't travel up to that Spain area. It's going to the US. So you're going so, to do the whole continent? Yes. East through west? Yes. The East whole, to west. Wow, how many days is that? Maybe in a few months or three, four months. Wow. Four months. It's actually a six months is a very short duration. Six months know. is nothing. Nothing, you know, on the bar you enjoy, you know. Free, you know. You and the world, you and your motorcycle. To me, motorcycling is a good therapy for me. I'm physically very fit. I don't have any problem with my health except for my poor left leg. I got a long steel plate here, 15 inches long. Wow. I don't have a femur bone, it's totally. Doctor taken it out through Baku Tai you know. With 48 bolts at night. I got 24 here and 34 here. Because of an accident? Yeah, car smashed into me. When was that? 91. What happened there? Oncoming. He was drunk. So I was trying to avoid him. He kept on coming to my direction. Last minute, I went off to the right. This is on the night old night. trunk road. Oh, no, oh, Those days, there is no highway. Yet. At night? No. At night. At night. I could have easily walked away parking my bike. Because he overtook a dozen of cars at night. I could have stopped the bike, walked away, nothing. So I challenged him. Hopefully, he comes in. He didn't keep on coming. Wow. I was hospitalized in Blab for four months. Wow. All hung up. <laughs> I shit, I eat, I urinate all on the bed. Four months in Blab Did that play in your mentality in terms of the safety? No. No. It was not a mistake. Is it? Yeah. It's his mistake. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever had a very serious accident while on the trip on the trips? No. Never. I had one uh, in uh, Iran. A bus ran into me, I fell into a drain, I smashed up my ring. He hit you from behind or in front? From in front. From in front. Yeah, he came into my way. So I avoided him. Click into my bike, so I fell inside the drain. So the handlebar fractured my ring bone. This is the London, London trip? London trip. Wow. It was very painful actually. Yeah. So I got no choice, no hospital. When you fracture your rib, there is no medication, you know. Take the pain, painkiller, yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So when I reached France, there was a little bit of pain, yeah. but I still carry on. I'm a very hardy person, actually. I'm a very, very hardy person. <laughs> Rain or shine, I don't care. Raining, come with her. Oh, it was so hot. I said, no problem, you carry on on the bike, you feel cool already. Right? What well, you need to stand by, you're wasting your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. BK comes here. Yeah. Yeah, Take care. Thank you. <laughs>